Bro? What's up, bro, Kev? We're live, buddy. Hallelujah. Preaching the word. He was a healer. Had no this guy's notorious. He was, a he was the Shit. most amazing person. If, it, if it's illegal to uh, to be a Christian, he'll be guilty for sure. This guy too. He's, he's Brother Luke. He's no wars, but he's won many battles. He's actually conquered the world. As we know it today. Brother Frank's on the we mic here. A lot of out here. Hallelujah. So you need to um, trust in yourself and believe that he is real. You don't need to see him. But you know what? He is so mighty that if he wants to reveal himself to you, he may just do that. So I'm here to tell you today, folks, that we need to repent from our sins because the wages of sin is death. Yep. And I don't want that for you. I want you to follow me and humble yourself and find Jesus Christ because you will live on forever. Your spiritual being will live on. Your body will deteriorate into the ground and be passed away. And that's it. But your spirit will live on. And if your spirit lived in the darkness, gnashing of teeth, crying for help, in the most painful way forever. Hey, preach. Do you understand what this means? Forever. There's a testimony from a gentleman that described a trip to hell. He was in an uh, operating room and the God, God just sent him to hell. And he described what hell was. And what he said, was that he had a hard time to explain what hell was. But when he did come out and saw the light and God gave him a chance, he said and he woke up and said, I'd rather have no arms, no legs. I'd rather be poor for a hundred years to spend one day in hell. Instead of spending one day in hell, for a hundred years, you'd rather have no legs, no arms. So I plead with you today, folks. I care about you as much as I care for myself. This is what the Bible says to do. Right, preach, come on. I've turned my cheek many times when people came across me. Meanwhile, I was the big thug back then. I was the big thug back then. I was the money collector. I was the guy that, that, would, uh, that you would need to call around to if someone owed you money. And I would break his leg. I'd bruise him up. And I would do it right in front of his girlfriend. I had no pity. If it was for five dollars or for it was a thousand dollars. God turned me around. Man. If he could do that to me, and I'm sharing these testimonies with you, is because I care about you. And this is the only thing I believe I want to do for the rest of my life is to come here and talk to you about these things. It is an amazing thing. You know, and when you start to read the gospel and truly understand what he is about, it's so overwhelming. But the best part is that when he communicates with you, the thing that I found most shocking of all is that he's communicating with me. Meanwhile, He's watching all of you. And he's watching everybody that is being killed, died, dying, losing their lives at the same time as he's speaking to me. That is a mighty God. And you need to meet this God. And only through Jesus Christ can you do this. Only through Jesus can you get to the Father. Not by no man and a priest in the church. Not by any other religions. This is the only true God. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. He came down in flesh. God can do anything He wants. He does miracles that are outstanding. This is historical proof of this. And all you have to do is just look it up, turn and have faith, Man. stop looking at porn, stop watching other girls with lust, that's adultery, it, you, you, that's a sin in itself, that you're not even just hating someone, in 1 John 
murder. Whosoever hates his brother is murdered. Imagine that. Just like hating someone. And you hate him right now, you're condemned even more. So you better repent. You better repent and don't hate the preacher because the gospel tells us to come out and preach the good, the good word. You need to come out and, 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 and pick up the cross and enjoy and find out the true way of living. For God is, God is wisdom. You know, we're so conformed to this world. Yep. We wrapped our, our heads are wrapped around all this stuff. Yep. You know, you're so conformed. You have to be transformed. This is what the Bible says, be transformed by renewing your mind. So you have to renew yourself. And this is what happens when the Holy Ghost gets into you. Your spirit, when your spirit's put into you, your mind changes. And you start to realize the reality of this world. This is not the way we're supposed to be living. You think that you're just going to go on, and you're just going to die, and then just and then that's it. There's nothing else. We've been lied to about the Big Bang. Yep. The only thing that was in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yep. And all things were made by Him. All things were made by Him, and there was nothing made that was made. So everything that you see that's around you, the clothing that you're wearing, the food that you eat, that you bless your food, everything is sacrificed. Your food is sacrificed for you to live. Jesus died on the cross for you to live. He's given you a choice. Good or, good or evil, darkness or light. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the light of man the light of man so if you want to survive and live you need to you need to get that light you need to reach out and repent and and, and, and ask jesus for forgiveness and reach out to him not in the wall not in the floor wake up your neighbor who cares reach out to him <laughs> he loved everybody yeah, like this. For God so loved the world. Who's the world? We are. The people. Every creed. Yep. Every, every color. Everything. Every I'll, shape. I'll go get the bullhorn. Anybody. God <laughs> loved the world. Oh, love God I'm so loved that. the world. That uh, means everybody. Uh, it went up in price. When I went first bought it was 200. Now it's people. three something. He's not picking out particular races. He's not anything about that. He came in in the New Testament to preach to the Gentiles. That's everybody. So, when we're speaking about God, we're speaking about spirit. And the only way to get to Him is through spirit. And the only way to do that is to be born again. Repent of your sins. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. With your whole mind, spirit, and soul with all your strength be born again remove your mind let him give you that path you have a duty to do you are a special person you are not nothing you are a special person and he's got a particular thing for everybody and he communicates with you each individually a different way and find the way he communicates with you it is the most amazing feeling and I'm here to tell you, to, sh uh, to, to share this with you, because I've got the love for the people. I've destroyed my life in the past. I've been renewed, and I'm sharing this with you. I've changed. You can change. This is a new thing for me as well. But I know that He is loving, and He is caring, but He listens. He listens, for the, uh, he listens to me for the littlest things. And I'm finding out that prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so powerful. I was praying one night because I had so much pain. And I was holding my stomach and I had so much pain. But he wasn't responding. And I was wondering why. Why did he ask? Sure. Maybe it's a little bit. So he wasn't responding to my prayers. 
and I was wondering why, why is it not responding to my prayers? But I prayed anyways. And the next night following, I prayed again because the pain came back. And I was praying again and I thought it was going to be over. But the pain still came back. And I was praying again. And I, and, and, and I just didn't give up. I didn't give up because I had faith. I had faith that this was going to happen because you know what I've heard? I've heard that there's, there, like he tests you. He will test you. And then on the third night, I had that pain again. And just before I could say I'm going to pray, I put my hand over my stomach and, and, and pray, the pain went away. He was listening at that very moment. He knew exactly at that very moment that I was going to pray. And he made that pain go away. I didn't give up. I kept my faith in him. So when I kept my faith in him, he made that pain go away before I even prayed. But you know what I did? Don't make me stop to pray. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I thanked him. And I praised my Lord. I praise my Jesus. I love him so much that you could put your dirt on me today, right now. And I wouldn't care. You need to hear this message. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For wide is the path. He is the good sheep. He is the good shepherd. He's going to give you guidance. He will help you through everything. And when you fall asleep and you can't sleep and they tell you to count sheep, don't count sheep. Just talk to the good shepherd. Talk to the good shepherd. He's the one that's going to help you. He's the one that's going to guide you on that right path to righteousness, kindness, happiness, the true love, the true love of God. And when people say love is love, that's not love. Love, you can't have two, two verbs, love and love. No, God is love. God's going to guide you. And sometimes it's hard to hear the truth because you know what? You don't want to hear the truth. But the truth of the matter is, truth is what hurts. Truth is real. And you need to get to it. And you need to hurry to it. Run to Him. Run to Jesus Christ. Preach. He cares about you and your soul and He doesn't want you there. But He's so loving that He gave you a choice. That's a loving God. He gave you a choice to be free and do what you want. But don't take that wrong path. And we're here today to tell you to take that right path. Yes. Take that right path with him today. The right way. Take the right path. It's narrow. It's very narrow. And I'm seeing a wide path. People are just walking by. They're just walking by like, a, like, like zombies not knowing anymore. You know, you don't even realize, is it true or is it not true that they poison our food? They put fluoride in our water. Is it not true? Is it not true that they're dumbing us down? The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. Get out of this world. Be conformed. Be conformed to it with a new mind. You need to have your mind reset. This place is the beginning of hell. It's not hell. This is the beginning. This is where everything is going to happen. This is where you're going to be judged at the end of the day. Where are you going to go when you die? Where are you going to go when you die? When you die today, if you die today, where will you go? Preach! Where will you go today? You know, I'm, I knew a man that uh, had a chip truck. Yeah, huge, too big. And I went back to see him because I saw it opened again because I didn't see it open for a while. And I was excited to see him, I said, like, I, I was wondering, like, how come he had his chip truck closed for so long? When I got there, I realized there was a new owner. And he told me the guy passed away. And I knew him well. And I know where he's going to be. It's not in heaven. And I feel bad that I wasn't able to reach to him, to talk to him. But you know what, that is, that is, that's his destiny. That's where it is. That's where he's going to fall. And I don't want this for you. Don't you want everlasting life? Your life will exist. Your life will keep going. Your spirit will still be alive. 
and going and you're gonna feel you're gonna feel the gnashing of teeth people crying out loud jumping on top of each other and they're gonna be looking up and they're gonna see heaven and they're gonna wanna reach up there and they're gonna say I wish that preacher spoke louder I wish he I, I wish he yelled louder yep. so I can hear him. Yep. He wasn't loud enough. Yep. You will be saying this. You will remember this. And I don't want this for you. Repent of your sins, folks. I'm being humble here with you. I care about you as I care about myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for listening. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Tag, you're it. Go ahead. Kevin, Kevin's got the fire today. Kevin's got the fire. When we said, when we said who yes, wants to preach, he's like right up there. Said, oh, I'll preach. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you're having a good day. It is a little cold, but the sun makes it okay. And the Son of Righteousness makes it okay for us to be here also, my friends. God so loved the world, and my brother said it, and I'll say it again, but God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, so that whosoever believes on Jesus will not perish, but would have life everlasting. That is the most wonderful gift of all. It is a gift that we must all cherish. It is a gift that needs to be received, the gift of life everlasting, my friends. I remember in the past, I used to struggle with diverse sins, diverse lusts, until the day that I would get my heart to Jesus Christ, until the day that God came and scooped me up, cleansed me, saved me. I'll never forget that day, the day that Jesus entered my life. Since that day, my friend, I can tell you that there is not a single problem. So yes, sorry, it was all my fault. I lose with my own other mic, I need to muffle it so it's louder. So yes, my friend, as I was saying, when I was younger, when Jesus came to my rescue, when Jesus came to me, He changed my life totally. I used to struggle with a lot of things. I used to struggle with lying, with cheating. I used to, st to struggle with my friend with stealing. I was a thief. I was a drug dealer and a drug addict. So that seemed convenient at the time, but it, it was a very bad mix in my life. I was an, an alcoholic. But the day that I put my life, that I put my heart, especially to Jesus Christ, my life has changed. My life has changed. I've been freed. I've been delivered from all struggles, all fear. And today I'm here to encourage you. If you open your heart to Jesus Christ, you will see a change, a drastic change in your behavior, in the way that you see the world, in the way that you see your brethren. You will see a huge change. God is the change. God makes a difference. My friend, the Bible is such a unique book, a unique book, my friend. A unique book. It's an amazing book full of, of, of amazing stories of the past, full of wisdom that will help you guide your life and do righteous deeds, righteous things and will help you understand what is good and what is bad at any given moment and circumstances. So my friends, when I started studying the Bible also, I got knowledge and instruction. I don't know if you knew that me, I'm from a broken family, no dad, no mother. I didn't know how to act or to behave in life. I didn't know how I was supposed to behave with my brethren. But when I started reading the Bible and acquiring wisdom, things got simpler, things got easier. And nowadays I know there's a lot of broken families, that there's a lot of child that are being raised also with our parents. And if you search for a guideline, read the Bible. The Bible, my friend, it states, God states unto the Bible that He's a light unto our feet, guiding our steps in this dark world. It is a very dark world. And we don't know every day where to go. We don't know every day how to behave. There's a lot of trends, a lot of fashions that rise up. And we don't know if we should follow this or believe that. But the truth is that the Bible, is the immovable, unchangeable, unaltered word of God. Jesus says, the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Therefore, he says, he that will build his life on the rock, his life shall never be moved. He says, I am the rock. Jesus Christ says that. And so will build his life with Jesus. Say, and in Jesus, his life will remain throughout all of eternity. will never pass away. Those that do the will of God, my friend, they remain forever. And the will of God for you for your life is that you believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus died on the cross for all of us, my friends. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, we can all be made the children of God. We can all be received unto glory, into heaven. It is an amazing hope and hope that I personally hold on to every single day of my life. I hope that I cherish and I hope that you should cherish as well. 
It didn't take me very long, my friend, to understand that this world was very vain and that people were fake. People were pretending that everything was okay around me every single day. But the Bible, my friend, and through this great hope that God has given unto you, you can actually start believing that everything is okay. <laughs> Even in the midst of hardcore circumstances, there's been children of God that tread this hope, that walked upon this hope, that, that kept the faith, that were sincere in their love for God and that went through hardship and heart or ordeal that are unfathomable for you and I. But they did it with faith and they did it with joy and they and they, they became legend, like my brother said <laughs> recently. I, I love that. He became a legend in the kingdom of heaven. God is a faithful God and he says, those that honor me I will honor, but those that despise me will be lightly esteemed. Preach. So we have choices to make. We can either honor God and walk with God every single day doing his will, trusting in his faithfulness and his kindness, or we can harden our heart against him, say, I will not yield, I will not obey, and then leave the consequences of such poor behavior. To let God Almighty either way would remain. He was in years and years to come. And his word will come to pass whether we participate, whether we actually embark in the boat or not. The kingdom of heaven is coming. It is at end. God will reveal it very, very soon in his children, but also in, in the literal sense. The kingdom of heaven will take the place of this earth, of this world. The heavens and the earth shall pass away, Jesus says. But this world shall never pass away. And the Lord has promised that he will take away this world. He says, Behold, I make a new heaven and a new earth. And of course, unless you enter the newness of life with, with God, with Jesus Christ, unless you are born again, you, you cannot be a part of this. Jesus says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Preach! So we should definitely take Jesus at his word. Because Jesus being the faithful witness of God, whatsoever he says is the truth. He is himself the truth made flesh. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. So therefore, if you want to see God, you have to believe Jesus Christ and follow his word. Jesus says, blessed are the, pe the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. So my friend, ask yourself, are you a peacemaker? In other words, have you made peace with God? Preach! Have you made peace with God? Preach! And you will see him. If you have, you will see him. It is a certainty. So my friend, the promises of God are coming to pass very, very soon. It is an exciting time to be alive, as my brother Tori said yesterday to me. It is a very exciting time to be alive. And we should rejoice and be exceeding glad, even in the midst of the chaos and of the fear. You know, Jesus says, you shall see great signs and wonders before the coming of the Son of Man. He says, you shall see, hear of wars and rumors of wars, and there will be earthquakes in diverse places. He actually explained to us clearly what would happen in this day and age. This day and age, we see, earth, we, we see and we hear of earthquakes, storms, hurricanes, forest fires, volcanoes, tornadoes. All of these signs are all around us in this present day and age. These are the signs of the time, the signs of the soon return of Jesus Christ. Are we, take, are we paying attention? Are we actually uh, paying attention to what's going on in the world? Jesus says that these signs will be uh, terrifying unto the Eden, unto the pagans, unto the unbelievers, but to us, the believers, to me, my brothers, these signs are actually uh, opportunity for us to rejoice because our salvation is right now. If very, very soon the Lord will come and take us in heaven, and we'll be forever with the Lord and we shall never depart from His presence. Why? Because we placed our hope in Him. And God is not a man that He would lie. I said that. My friends, God is very faithful. I know myself personally, I went through many, many struggles, many difficulties, even recent, rec recently. But there is not a single day that passed by where God doesn't show Himself faithful. There's not a single day that passed by where God doesn't provide for me. There's not a single day that passed by where God doesn't bring joy and peace into my heart. And I'm here to let you know that if you would call upon his name in time of need and struggle and anguish, God will be for you the comforter that he promised he will be. Jesus says, I will never leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He says, I send you the spirit of comfort, the Holy Spirit. He says, I will be with you every day until the very end of the world. It is a promise from Jesus Christ and every word that Jesus pronounced, our spirit and our life, they are truth. And they need, they need to be grasped and they need to be cherished. They need to be stored in our hearts. What was so special about Mary, mother of Jesus, right? That struck me when I read the word of God. Well, when the shepherd came and they saw Jesus when he was born in a manger, it says that whatsoever word they spoke concerning what the angel had said unto them, Mary stored these words in our heart. She didn't forget those words. Same way with David, a great man, a man after God's own heart. He wrote in the psalm, uh, 
and store that word in my heart that I would not sin against thee. So my friend, we have to start also doing the same thing. The word of God is very, very precious and wisdom is to be valued more than rubies and more than gold as well. And you should definitely start storing for yourself uh, treasures in heaven. It is by grasping the promises of the Lord God that you actually end up uh, making yourself rich in, in the life to come. My friend, God has, has a plan for your life. When God created you, He had a plan. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord, plans to give you prosperity in the future. So God knows exactly what He has for you, what He wants for you. He wants to give you the kingdom of heaven and the glory of heaven. But my friend, it is only a matter of receiving, only a matter of believing. With God, it is all is faith-based with God. If you believe, it will be done unto you according to thy faith. This is true faith that great men of God, and we have the list of this, these great men of God in Hebrew 11, with all these fantastic deeds, all these subdued nation, all the, the, the displayed before kings, all the remained in lion's den, all the hidden cave, all the changed the world to this day, and all they saved their own souls and, and other souls as well. So by faith, my friend, if you place your faith in Jesus Christ, if you do a prayer of faith not tonight not in, your, in your prayer not closet, in, in the secret Why? place, Why? if you call upon God with, a, with faith you're in your heart, you'll see God no, will surprise you. God will send you signs and wonders that you may believe, that you may see that you will hear. God is very faithful. And God has promised, and He says, if you know the word, He says, test me with truth. If I don't answer, if I don't open the, the, the storehouse of heaven, the gates of heaven, we watch and, and, and give you a blessing. Certain, we'll try to molest so my friends, and you should else. definitely consider believing in Jesus Christ. You're making a legend for yourself, If judgment is soon, you come upon the earth. Personally, God has given me dreams and vision of great catastrophic events which are become the past very, very soon. It appeared in the form of four dreams, where I saw asteroids that should be called upon the earth. Where I saw asteroids, my friends. Fall upon they like here. me because and I've I'm seen that, and it will come to pass very soon because God like is faithful. And oh, when He gives me dreams, like when He gives me dreams, it comes to pass. You gotta have a sense of humor. Oh, it's so not that's not fun. Oh, causing on. tsunamis. I saw the East Coast being oh, plunged be under water. <laughs> I saw beasts rising up for beasts to go to hell. And I saw people compromising with that beast. We are in that season. The Bible says the man of God is sober. The mark of the beast, which will soon be implanted. The Bible talks about the time oh of trouble God. like never was. The, man of God the Bible is talks about the great falling away and the what, great division which will fall upon the world. And if it was possible, then we could see even the elect, the very ah, elect. So, great. so God, my friend, has a plan for God wants you to hold on to him today. God wants you to take a hold of his salvation and of his grace and of his mercy today. But my friends, God is a righteous God and God has the riches of heaven that he wants you to explore with him. Try all of eternity. If you get to know the Lord like God today, my friend, and this present day, and a relationship with Him, we'll ask Him when He comes back. Well, right. when that cease, right. He will keep on impressing you and showing you, and allowing you to grow that? in the knowledge and in the fear of Him okay. out of eternity. Give God me a second, in Philip, my friends. Two minutes. Two minutes. This life is not long two minutes. I gotta get you a hot dog, okay? But in Jesus Christ, you are actually the person of God depicted for you to behold. But my friend, Jesus was the express image of God. Don't worry, you don't have to explain to me. I'm gonna get you two minutes. In Jesus Christ, okay. the fullness of the Father, the fullness of God. So my friends, I encourage you. You see, we're all attracted by all these false gods, these idols, these actors, these, these, these music, musicians, these singers. Why? Because we're craving. We're craving for entertainment. Yeah, but we're craving for much more than that as well. I'm sorry, I'm not done. I'm sorry, friend. Let him preach, let him preach. So yes, my friend. Okay. We're all craving for, for, for a superman or a super person, right? This is why we admire all these people. We want to be shown the way, we want to be impressed. It's like that. But the Lord God is in, my friend, that will every time surprise us and impress us. In Jesus we see God, and if you behold the miracles that Jesus Christ did, my friend, we will be utterly impressed. We will be, we'll be shocked to see what He did for us, for man. Every single day Jesus, when He walked upon the earth, He healed the sick, He raised the dead, He fed the multitude, and all of his miracles were very, very selfless and good. He changed the water into wine for, for a marriage because the Lord honors marriage. The marriage is a, a sacred unto God. It is a sacred institution that he installed in the Garden of Eden. And God, God takes another joy in the godly marriage where a woman submit unto her husband and where her husband loves his wife like, like Christ loved the church. 
And my friend in this society, we don't like to hear about these words. Even the word submission, I saw people, people look at me funny, especially women. The word submission, people don't like that word because feminism has been implanted into the mind of people. In the Garden of Eden, actually, that's where fem feminism took to root the first, in, the first, in the first place. You see, the serpent, the snake of old came unto Eve while she was in the Garden of Eden, and he said unto her, Is it true that God said you can't eat of any fruit of the, of the Garden of Eden? And Eve, being already deceived, answered the serpent, which was much wiser than she was, which was a deceiver and a murderer from the very beginning, and said unto him, it's not true. It's not true. No, we can't eat of the, of, the, of the fruit that are in the garden. We can eat of certain trees, but not of that one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We can't eat of this one. And then, because God said that we will surely die today that we eat of it. And then the serpent says, you will not die. You will not die. But God is actually not righteous, not fair with you. He wants you to be subjected unto Adam and it, and it is not good. And he wants to keep you oppressed. That's what he told you. You will not die, but the day that you eat of it, your eyes will open and you will be as a God. You will be like God, like Him. So, at that very moment, she was deceived, right? She saw that the tree was good looking, that it was precious to enlighten her mind. So, so she was deceived, right? And then she ate of it, and gave to, to Adam, and from the transgression of one man, came sin into the world, and death as well, and from the righteousness, and the holiness of one man, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, and holiness, and righteousness and life came into the world. Jesus says, I came to give them life and life more abundantly. So in Jesus Christ, we have life and life in abundance. So this is why we need to turn unto Jesus. And we must not be deceived like Eve was deceived concerning the false doctrine that Satan will try and place into our heart and in our mind. Because the consequences will be dire. In Ezekiel, it says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. My friend, if we sin against God, we will die. We're bringing unto ourselves death. But if we believe in God and if we turn away from evil, then my friend, we will live forever with God in the kingdom of heaven. Trusting in Jesus Christ, I think it is the best thing that a man can do. When God created us, my friend, in the Garden of Eden again, He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, in our resemblance. Let us give him dominion over the fish of the seas, over the fowls of the earth, and over every living and walking, creeping things of the earth. He says, let us create man in our image, and then let us give him dominion. Because if you're in the image of God, it is okay for you to have dominion because you're righteous. God is not like us. He doesn't have two hands and two feet. It is not his image. God is invisible. The invisible God he is. But God is image is that he is selfless. The character of God, the heart of God. God is a selfless God. But we were deceived in the Garden of Eden into believing feminism. But we were deceived also into following the serpent into further deception, into further perversion. The serpent, my friends, is selfish by nature. He came only on the earth to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal our blessing. Kill one another, kill us, and destroy the, this beautiful world that God has given unto us, and destroy this relationship that God is trying to build with man. So the serpent deceived, and then we became selfish. And since then, my friend, you can look all around you. The world, my friend, has been suffering the consequences of selfishness, even in our intimate relationships. If you have a, a selfish friend. And that will be your emotion, your feelings for that person will start dying. Well, in this world, it's the same way. Us as selfish people, we've destroyed the world. And we're the only organism that acts like this. The bees, are, if you look at the bees, for instance, my friends, the bees are a very good example of that. They take care of the flower, and the flowers take care, my friends, of the fields, and the fields, they feed the cattle, and there's a beautiful circle of life, everything is interdependent. But us as human beings, we just take, 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 take. So, undoubtedly, we we're wrong in the equation of life right now. We're not living our true calling, our true purpose. We were meant to have dominion, to take care, to protect, to preserve, but now we abuse. We're opportunistic. We're selfish. So my friend, unless we are being brought back into the perfect image of God, unless, my friend, we are renewed, my friends, by the transforming of our mind, through the studying of the Word of God, by beholding Jesus, because by beholding we become, by beholding the Lord Christ, we will become in His likeness. Unless we do that, my friend, we have no place in heaven. My brother said a beautiful word when he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a glass of water. And sin or selfishness, because at the root core of sin, there is always selfishness. Always selfishness. It says, in that glass of water, if you pour one, one drop of sin or arsenic, or some poison, then the gas is defiled, and you can't drink it. The same thing is for the kingdom of heaven. You cannot bring sin into heaven. You would like to live in a heaven where there is sin and selfishness. 
Therefore, my friend, it is normal and logical even unto you that God doesn't allow you to enter heaven in your sin and in your selfishness. And God is not a respecter of person. All of us needs to go through the same process of sanctification, which means cleansing, separation from sin. Preach! My friend, God is a faithful God and a righteous God, and by beholding Jesus Christ, you will become in His likeness. Jesus being the express image of God, by beholding Jesus, my friend, you will also be the express image of God.